Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you've been following me on Instagram, you saw me put a reel up about this, which is an Alucab Shadow Worn 270 in two meters length. And this went on a few days ago. I brought it up here to Richmond Park just to open it up, add some lights to it, give you a quick walk around of what it looks like. So let's open it up and I'll show you what's inside. And why two meters? Well, my rack from here to the end here is exactly two meters. And I think a lot of what we do when we buy stuff, we don't think about the consequences of the aesthetics of the vehicle. So for me, if I was to get a 2.6 meter awning, it would sit out here and it would look terrible. And there are so many people that drive vehicles like this, that have bought awnings like this, that are way too big for the roof racks. And so they jut out. Now my experience, and this comes from lots of experience, you've seen it on the channel, is that when you've got something jutting out the front here, and you start going down where bushes, trees are overhanging, that becomes a catching point. And way too many times you can go and look at videos all over the internet you end up tearing the top of the cover and you end up bending it because branches get caught in the overhang. And to be perfectly honest with you, pay is your money, you take your choice, I get all of that, it's all personal preference, but they look absolutely shit. So as you know on the channel, I had a whole series of awnings that attached to the back of the rack up here, my moon shade, my garbled end nature hike shade, and I attached them on the back here purely because I could put shelter out the back of the vehicle. And then I could put my cot tent down and it was really good. It was easy to pack away and I love the setup. And even with my Ozten RV3 with the awning that came out the back that went over the top, I could still lift the tailgate up. And I had cover out the back. So the reason why as you saw from all the videos, why I wanted something out the back was purely because I spend most of my time. I put the tailgate down, my kitchen is here, it's my fridge is here. This stays open and that's not enough when it rains or it's hot to get any shelter at all. So this is now, for me, perfect. But as I said, I've been holding out for a two meter and Alucab are the only ones that do a two meter awning. Now I'll preface that by saying Alucab are the only ones that do a really strong aluminium quality two meter awning. Now why I say that is you can get two meter awnings but I wouldn't trust the quality of them. Now this build is not a cheap build. Everybody's commented on the stuff that's gone in here so this again is not cheap. It's on the higher end of 270 awnings and that's the way I like it because I want to buy something that's going to stay on this vehicle for at least another five years and everything that went on this vehicle always had the plan that it would last for at least five to ten years, which is why I didn't go for any cheap shit. So that's why this is on this vehicle. It's really easy to set up, and I'll close this down and walk you through how it's easy to set up. Now, a few things. I bought this from Tough Trek, and because I've got my roof rack for our Land Rover Passion, they had to get real creative on how to bolt this thing to the roof rack. Now this has M6 slots, but M6 slots for the weight and the flex on the rack with those bolts would not be able to withstand it. So unfortunately, they had to drill right the way through the rack. And if I can climb up, I'll show you what it looks like. So this is the actual, you can hear it. So they've elongated the hole here for a, an 8mm and an 8mm and an 8mm gone right the way through the rack. This is the only way they could make it fit, but it is rock solid. They've done the same on the back end as well to make sure it fits there. And so this is the only way it would fit. It took them about two hours to do and they broke about three drills trying to drill the stainless, but that's okay, it's on.
Now the way this awning works is it's freestanding and it really is rock solid. I can pull on this and the only thing that's moving is the car and that doesn't move a lot. One leg and under inclement weather you can push this in. And you drop the leg down. At the bottom of every arm, it's got some tie downs, some guy ropes on each of them. I don't know whether you're going to use it, but you know, like a lot of things with these awnings, if it's windy, take them down. These are really meant for shade, you know, get out of the rain, get out of the sun. You're asking for trouble no matter what awning it is unless you've got this thing bolted down really quickly. If you get into any wind or any potential wind thunderstorms, none of them will be able to withstand it because what will end up happening is the wind will get up under here. And really you've got a massive sail under here that will just lift up. The other thing this has got is got a leg. Let you push the leg up, I can do it one hand. There we go. And then that will allow any sort of drain off that you get or any pulling. Now these are susceptible to pulling I think it's a common problem with any awning because of the amount of fabric you've got on the top. But you can get a sort of like an anti-pooling kit that clips on and pulls it down to run, that get the runoff. Now, those of you that follow the channel know that I always like modif modifying things. So over here is a switch. It's a dimmer switch. I can turn on these. And this gives me massive light. There's one on the other arm behind the back of the tailgate. So if the tailgate's down, I could put that in. So why are they there? Well, it is quite dark under here, and it is daylight, but this gives me just enough light. Now, because of the arm goes here, I have to put this one over on this side. These drifter lights also go in amber as well, which is really nice to keep the bugs away. But I think most of the time, if I'm going to be sitting under this at dark, I'm going to be over here, and this will give me enough light, sort of like, just to sort of... So why the lights, it's quite simple, is at night time, I can stick these on put the amber on and then sit out under here and I've got light shining down. So you can get these from Drifter, they come in different sizes. This is 900. I originally had this on the back of the tailgate underneath the lip there. I took one of those off and then I got a three-way splitter and then ran a cable through a hole that I made in there and then stitched that back up and sicker flexed it so no water can get in. So these are on VHB tape cleaned everything down, stuck them on, and just to make sure they don't go anywhere, I put some zip ties on here and here, and everything closes up fine, so it doesn't rub anything like that. The reason why this one is this way is because the leg fits into that bracket, but I still think you'll get enough light being filtered over off the bottom of the canvas. And then I have another one that is here. So I got quite a lot of light under here, And it's not too bright. And like I say, this is on a dimmer. So if I open up the tailgate, I can actually dim it and turn it off. These LEDs are in a gel bonded coat. So they are fully protected. They're IP67. And what's really good about these having this sort of gel cushioned where the LEDs are is lifting this up going to have to be careful but this goes up against the glass so it's not going to crack the glass or do any damage there unless you really wrench it up. Now those eagle-eyed viewers will look at the back of my vehicle and think hang on a minute something's missing and you're right the ladder's gone and the reason why the ladder's gone is there's not enough room to be able to get past this arm so I took it off. So if anybody wants to buy a Voyager L322 rear ladder, let me know. Now, since the tailgate has been off, I'm missing the fact that I used to be able to put my hand up and close the tailgate. That's not what it was meant for. It was meant to get onto the roof. Um, now I'm going to have to figure out another way on the roof. But I think I'm going to do that by getting hold of one of those brackets that fit into here that allows you to sort of hop on to the side steps and get on there and get up. And if anybody wants it, Voyager L322 rear ladder rack. It's in steel, it's quite heavy, 
and you're going to need four M8 bolts to go in it with rib nuts. That's how that's put together. Very nice. It's four bolts with M8, one, two, and there's two up there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take out the rib nuts that are in here and then plug those. You'll never see them. And then eventually when I get back off my next trip, what I'll do is I will take these out, take the rib nuts out and then fill it from behind and then you'll never know that that was there. With the shadow warning, it comes with a proprietary clip and so that is in here as well. And that's the tensioning arm, which you just pull over and that keeps that tensioned. It's high enough where none of my lights are affected. It's high enough on this last arm to be able to make sure that the tail goes up. There's just enough space here where the tailgate can go up. So if it is raining, any of the water that comes off here, I think they make a kit that comes off here. I'm not 100% sure, but somebody showed me that you have it. There is an ability to buy sort of like a gutter kit to be able to go on there. I can also run lights off here as well. These are really meant as sort of like chase lights. Those are tied into my uh, reversing system. So I, I got this light that will come this way if I need it to, but to be honest with you, I don't use them that much. They're really there for show more than anything. I have used them. Um, and especially at night with those lights on at the back, it does flood everything out. Sam's got something very similar. Go to Sam's motor machine. He's got rear reversing lights on the back of his. These are LEDs, but these are far, far more powerful. But I control these from a separate switch. It's not 100% tied into the reversing system. Should be, but can't be bothered. So the arm foot, it's got two holes in the bottom here of the foot. So if you put the foot down, you can stake it out. Put some pegs in there. It comes with a peg bag, which is here, but the pegs, I got better pegs than came in there and I need to cut that off. And then release and then push. And as you can see, it closes up really well. There are some Velcro tabs, strips, which are here. So you just normally fold it up and then strip it over. The one thing I really do like about all of this is that the cover on the bag is a lot, lot bigger than the actual awning, which is great because it's not a tight fit. I think the biggest problem you have with some of these, especially the cheaper ones that have got their big logos blasted down the side, is they're too tight to get them back in, especially when they're wet. So all of the wires that go from the LEDs go into this splitter and then the splitter just easily just pops into here, out of the way. Now one thing I like is that where these Velcro strips are, you can put them anywhere you want. So there's many different places you can actually have them. I think that one's too far over, but for now, that's fine. As I said, one thing I really like is the bag is big enough where you don't have to struggle to put it all away. Pretty good, one-handed. Now, as I mentioned before, this one is expensive, but it's top quality and I love the quality of it. Really good build. The thing that I really love about this is not emblazoned with plastic spray on logos. It's one of the pet peeves I have. I know a huge amount of brands who want to plaster their logos everywhere. There is a company that begins with a D and has got a four by four. I absolutely hate their logos and branding on things. This is subtle. And I like the fact that this can come off if you pick it off because I'm all about stealth, but I actually think this is quite subtle as opposed to having it blasted down the side. I am not a fan of that. Some of you are, I'm sorry, but I'm just not. It does, doesn't fit with the aesthetics of the car. So anyway, but I love it. I really do. You can see the other bracket on the back here. Without the ladder, it's gonna be difficult to get up here. But you can see how they installed it into here. Straight through three places either side and there's the bracket on the other end. But it's good. Now I know in the past I've said 
I didn't want one of these. And I was more than happy with the awnings that I had attached to the back that popped out. But I got a plan. And the plan is over the next probably six months, I might go back to a rooftop tent. And there's a reason why, is that because finally Alucab have come out with a lightweight, the LT50, which is a 50 kilogram tent, 100 pounds. Take out the mattress, which is another five kilograms, it's even less than that. Now people think that these are big vehicles. They're not. The carrying capacity that you have on that roof is exactly the same as a Defender 90. And the reason why I know is when I had my iCampus SkyCamp Mini on there and my transit bag, I had no room. That's all I carried on my 90. That's all I could carry on here. So although these are big vehicles, back to front, you don't get a lot of carrying room on that roof rack. And part of it's to do with the way the tailgate lifts up and part of it is to do with the way the roof itself wraps around the front. So the LT50 itself just about will fit on that roof rack. It might come out probably about a few centimeters on the front, but it will fit. And that would then allow me to take everything I have on my roof rack, which is my spare wheel and my Starlink, put the mount onto the top of the roof. So the LT50 also comes with a molly panel where you can put things like the ladder on it, but I can mount my spare tire because it takes about 30 kil kilograms. That's not 30 kilograms. So I'll have enough to be able to pop it up and it will still support the weight from it. So that's why I'm thinking about doing it. They are a lot, lot cheaper than the Gen 3. The Gen 3 is way too much tent for me. But the great thing about the LT50 is it's only six and a half inches in height. It's extremely slim. So that will be able to give me just enough to bump up the tire, put on my Starlink. I got, there's a mount that has VHB pads on it. I can stick those down. My Max tracks can also go on another mount, which I've got, which is flat, which will fit in here vertically. And I won't need to worry about it. But anyway, that is for the future. I am still 100% not committed to it, but we'll see. But so that's it. That's a walk around of the Alucab Shadow Awn 270, two meter long awning. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe. And with that, see you on the next one. Cheers.